La 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 la. Hi everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Farron, I'm your fashion guru. And today, since I was cutting something out of a sweater knit, I thought I would bring you guys along with me. This is going to be the cut it out part three version of cutting your knits and stretch fabrics. I have seven tips, so come along with me. So this is my fashion studio. My name is Farron. I know that I said last week we were going to sew our knits. I kind of made a mistake because I need to cut before I sew, right? This is gonna be a great video, I know. The number one tip of cutting your knits or stretch knits or any fabric for that matter is sharp scissors. You don't want any bouncing fabric or a rotary cutter that has a new blade. I have to cut this really slinky knit. So how am I gonna do this when it's shifting around? Tip number two, tissue paper. But it has to be the kind of like rough, toothy surface, not the slippery kind because that defeats the purpose, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set out my tissue paper to fit the pieces that I need to cut. Then here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay out our fabric. This is a silk mesh and I hand dyed it to match my sweater knit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm cutting all of my pieces right side up. So that is technically tip number three. Most commercial patterns only have one side of the pattern, right? So what you would do is you would cut one side of your pattern and then flip it over in order to mirror the other side. Tip number four, don't have the fabric hanging over the side of the table because that can stretch out your fabric and then when you cut it, it could actually spring back into form and then you could lose about an inch of your pattern and that won't be good, right? Just make sure that you're not stretching and your fabric is laying nicely on the table. And if you saw last week's video, you know that the most stretchiest part goes horizontally around the body. However, if your fabric is super stretchy and your pattern or your style doesn't really need that stretch, you can actually change the grain line depending on what your pattern, your commercial pattern says. That's not really a tip, that's just something that we talked about last week in this video right here. So you can go check that out after this. All right, I got you. Okay, that looks amazing. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this out. We're gonna place our pieces. I keep moving my fabric. Stay there. Here we go. We have our pattern piece. <sighs> okay, all things looking good over here. I have my pieces set out. Now what do I do? Tip number five is using really sharp pins when you're pinning your pattern to the fabric. You can use really sharp pins or ballpoint needle pins, which were made for knit fabrics. But since I have a very hard stock pattern, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to trace out my pattern piece on a piece of tissue paper. I'm going to sandwich the tissue paper with the fabric and the other tissue paper. Sometimes they use this technique in the industry with a lot of stacks of fabric. Because of the hard pattern paper, they trace out their pieces onto marker paper or tissue paper and they put their pattern piece on top. I like this method because I can secure the tissue paper to the bottom tissue paper. You probably have a commercial pattern or some sort of paper, so you can just pin directly onto your pattern piece. Tip number six is checking your pattern layout. The majority of the time, knits are directional, which means that sometimes your pieces have to be cut in all the same direction. Knits have a tendency to shine, you know, like the spandex. You'll get shading, which happens when pattern pieces are one way up, the other one is down, and one looks dark and one looks light. So always check your pattern layouts and make sure that you are doing it correctly. Moving on, we're gonna get to cutting this thing, I swear. This last tip is something I personally do with knits that are close fitting. I add three quarters to one inch extra on the vertical seams. There's a good reason. Commercial patterns 
they have negative ease. This could mean that you've cut out your pattern, you think that it's going to be great, and then you go to try it on and it is too tight. Or maybe it's too close fitting that you don't particularly want that close fitting knit. You can always cut off the excess later. That's just a really good tip. I have never heard this tip before. And now we're getting to finally cutting this thing out. My tips as usual in my cut it out videos is keeping your scissors close to the table and try not to do like these little tiny little snips because you don't want these like weird jagged edges. You want long strides as much as you can. If you're going around a corner, I get it. You know, you have to do these little tiny snips. I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get to cutting. You're literally cutting out like a little sandwich. It's so great. I mean, we're done for today. Next week, I'm not joking, we're really gonna to get to sewing our knits without a serger. I have a few new techniques that you guys may not know about. Maybe you do, but you might wanna check out the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And blah, 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 blah. how can I do this without <laughs> sounding so stupid? Okay, bye. <laughs>